Hey everyone, Psychotronic Squirt Gun coming at you with another comic book haul. I um, hope you're enjoying these. I keep them short and sweet. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this stuff. What do you say? I pull these from my uh, personal collection. You know what I mean? So uh, this is 1992, and it's uh, Batman 483. Crash and Burn, Jim Apparel Art. Um, I don't remember how I got this, <laughs> but it's uh, it was a cool cover, so I thought I'd share it. I want to read my older comics. I've, I've been reading the newer Batman, but I'm going to stop that soon. And uh, yeah, it's looking okay. Just some solid... Uh, comic book art from the uh, early 90s. Okay, so here we have uh, 1981. Dazzler number three with Doctor Doom. Yep, Doctor Doom. I'm a fan whether he's popular or not, you know. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. I got We got, you know, earlier... John Romita Jr. Uh, breakdowns, I think. Um, that's pretty cool. Doom. You know, you want to sell a comic, you just throw them up against Doom. How do they survive against Doom? And hopefully the writer makes it interesting. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Dazzler, number three. Um, here we have 1980. Defenders. 101. For Renewal. I read this one. Something about J.M. Matias's uh, writing. He just... The art is okay. Okay, the art's okay. But it's always about these character studies. And... You know, you got Hellcat. Hulk is, is mad at the Defender, so he leaves. Stuff like that. But, um, you know, three of the Defenders go to this small village in Africa um, to see, like, how naturally uh, humans could be attuned to the, to, the, um, to the world, to the earth, indigenous tribes. And they needed this. They need to be reminded of the of the goodness of the world, because they stopped uh, a hell mouth a hell mouth opened and Satan tricked everyone everyone on earlier issues. So it was really cool. Also features um, Devil Slayer, and a really cool uh, story about him. Yeah, I, I, I want to show that too. You know, like he's he's upset with his junkie. Because the junkie was able to see him. He could he could just, you know, put on a disguise so you can't see his true uh, character. And it was only because the dude's brain was scrambled with drugs, you know. But in reality, Devil Slayer saw, some, saw himself in the junkie, you know. It was really cool. It's like, <laughs> you don't get that. You don't get simple, like, stories like that anymore with a, with a, a moral twist, right? What's the moral... Of the story, you know. Um, 1993. This is uh, Indies from the 80s. From Warp Graphics. It's just a random comic. Uh, Elf Quest Hidden Years. <laughs> Number six. And it uh, looks pretty cool. The art looks great. And uh, yeah. Totally into it, man. <laughs> oh, this this one right here, right? You can see that dude's face on the edge there. Oh, man, it, it's just it's weird, like weird alien looking stuff, right? You could find just good comics on the cheap, man. It's so freaking crazy. Okay, so this is uh 1995. Starman number three. Shout out to Higgy Comics, Higgy Pop, right? Everybody know everyone knows who Higgy Pop is. He got me into his James Robinson run 
of Starman. So I'm putting it together. It started at number zero. I'm at the fourth issue, which is number three. And yeah, it's about Jack Knight, who's a reluctant hero. But at the end, you get to see what happened to uh, the earlier Starmen or where they're at. They get little cameos in the end, you know. And this one's cool. He, uh, Jack gets to avenge his brother by pretty much taking, by pretty much killing his brother's murderer, right? <laughs> and uh, you got the shade here. The shade is behind the scenes tricking everyone, even the main villain, the mist. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's got, it's got some Shakespearean, you know, tragedy in there, right? Because uh, Starman's brother, who was murdered, right? Well, he ended up killing that guy. But that guy's sister, who might have a crush on Jack here, <laughs> now hates him because he killed his he killed his brother, right? So it's like one of those blood feuds, right? Anyway, yeah, uh, James Robinson, totally into it. Nineteen eighty eight, classic X Men. 24. It actually reprints Uncanny X-Men 118. Um, you guys, I, I love reading this. I'm still in the John Byrne era. And this is where we'll, we find out Wolverine actually has a history in Japan. Uh, the X-Men haven't made it back um, from uh, their Antarctica Adventure fighting Magneto, where they think Jean Grey is dead, and vice versa. Jean, Jean, Jean Grey made it back home, and Xavier and Jean think the the rest are dead. I love these backup issues. I mean, the backup stories, character studies of of the of individual X Men. So, you know, this one this one is uh, is is beautiful about Jean Grey. She thinks uh, Scott is dead and all that stuff. It's really good. Love my old X-Men. And I collect them too. It's just, uh, I love I love reading the classic X-Men. Sometimes I compare, if I have an older one, I compare what they changed, you know? It's pretty cool. The last one we'll do is uh, 1976, Captain Marvel, 49. Just uh, been picking up these Captain Marvels when I see them and uh, putting them together. You know, this one's uh, is not Jim Starlin, but it's still good stuff, you know. So, yeah. Hopefully the camera's doing his stuff justice. <laughs> Where it doesn't have to refocus. I just thought of that. Yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for watching this. Please check out the playlist for older um, comic book hauls. Uh, check out tonight, Thursday night, chaotic comic book cover displays and more with friends. And uh, on Mondays, I do a claim sale with Cheap Comic Collector. All right, you guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And see you on the next one.